Okay, let's have a look at a chi-square test when the assumptions have been violated. I'm going to do two examples. One is for a 2 by 2 table, and one is for a table that's bigger than 2 by 2 Now, the advice I'm going to give in this video is from a couple of stats books. One is Andy Fields' Discovering Statistics Using SPSS, his recommendation, and the other is one by Julie Poulant. Now, if your lecturer tells you something different, please do use their advice and what they want you to use, but this is just standard in most texts. Okay, let's look at our 2x2 our two two example first. If we go to Analyze Descriptives and chi or Cross Tabs, just as we did before, um, we're going to look at Gender and Smoke, Smoking Status. Under Statistics, choose Chi-Squared, and the Effect Size, Phi, will be the one we want to look at for a 2x2. Two two. Continue. Under Cells, we want to tick Expected, because this is how we're going to check whether or not the assumptions have been violated. Click Continue, and then click OK. Alright, in our output, here's our crosstabs table. Now the assumption for a 2x2 two two table, meaning two categories by two categories, is that all the expected counts are at least 10. Now you can see that two of them here, are one is 7.8, one is 8.2, both less than 10, which means we violated that assumption. When that happens with a 2x2 two two table, we go down here and we can use Fisher's exact test. Um, the likelihood ratio is also an option, um, but with, a with just a 2x2 two two table, Fisher's exact test is, is common to use. Um, I'm just going to use the two-sided figure here, and that's when your alternate hypothesis is two-tailed. In other words, you don't specify a direction of the difference. Um, for example, you don't say there's more male smokers or more male non-smokers. You just say there is an association between gender and smoking status. Um, once you determine which significance value is best to use according to your alternate hypotheses, you want to compare it to your alpha just as usual. Now alpha, which is our level of significance, is typically 0.05. We can see that this is much bigger than 0.05, which means that a result is not significant and we do accept the null hypothesis, also known as H0. Our null hypothesis in a chi-squared test is always there is not a significant difference or a not a significant association between the two variables. In other words, smoking status is completely independent of someone's gender. So that is the result that we would accept in this case because this is not significant. Um, and when you get a non-significant result, you do not look down here at the effect size um, because it's, it doesn't matter because the result is not significant. Now let's have a look at an example with a table bigger than 2 by 2. Here I have some insurance data, and the two variables we're going to use are the type of claim someone has filed and whether or not that claim turned out to be fraudulent. So let's conduct our chi-squared test as normal. Analyze descriptives, cross tabs. Type of claim. Because this has more categories, I'm going to make it my row variable. And fraudulent is only two. It's yes or no. So I'm going to make it my column, just so my table is easier to read. Statistics, chi-squared. And this time we're going to use Kramer's V. Continue. And in cells, I'm going to click expected but it's not absolutely necessary this time. Click Continue and OK. Here's my cross tabs table. It's a bit bigger this time. It's bigger than a 2x2. Two two. And our assumption for a table bigger than 2x2 two two is that the expected count is not less than 5, or 20% of the cells have expected count um, greater than 5. So if we look down here at the bottom, it says six cells, or 60%, have expected count less than 5. This violates the assumption because 60% is much bigger than 20%. So I'll say it again, we want this value to be 20% or less, otherwise the assumption has been violated. If you need to rewind and listen to that again, go ahead. I know it's a lot to take in in one go. Um, when that's the case, we're going to read off the likelihood ratio. Here's my statistic, my degrees of freedom, and my significance value. Again, I'm going to compare it to my level of significant, uh, level of significance, 0.05. This is much bigger, which means I accept my null, and I conclude that there is no association between the type of claim and whether or not the claim is fraudulent.